I think it's important for us to tell ourselves the home truth because we must tell ourselves the home truth. What we must do to challenge these bandits because we all know the consequences of this banditry and insurgency on the morale and on our lives. Because it will take decades to get out of it, if at all we get out of it. Because we all know the consequences and we know are the problems. I think it's important for us to tell ourselves the home truth. Because we must tell ourselves the home truth. What we must do to challenge these bandits, because we all know the consequences of this banditry and insurgency on the morale and on our lives. Because it will take decades to get out of it, if at all we get out of it, because we all know the consequences and we know are the problems. This is one of the statements I heard, one of the videos, one of the comments I heard from a high-profile person. And I was so surprised, so shocked that Nigeria is finished. Because if with all these billions we're here every day, every time, and they cannot be able to conquer this issue of insecurity, then there is a serious problem. There is a serious problem in the country. Because this person saying this is not just a straight person that is just talking from whichever side of the mouth. This is a high-profile northerner. You know, like part of the head of that particular region. In case you did not hear what he said very well, he said, I think it's important for us to tell ourselves the home truth because we must tell ourselves the home truth. What we must do to challenge these bandits because we all know the consequences of this banditry and insurgency on the morale and on our lives. Because it will take decades to get out of it, if at all we get out of it. Because we all know the consequences and we know are the problems. Do you know how many years in one decade? It will take a very long time. Do you know what that means? That means that even those farmers that have stopped going to their farms because of that same issue of insecurity will not return to the farm very soon. It will take a very long time for them to go back to their farms, for things to normalize. That means the issue of a food scarcity, hunger, it has not even started. The same way the United Nations said it. This is so surprising. I don't know why the federal government of Nigeria choose to, as in, to punish the people this way. I don't know why. Because I don't see the reason. I don't see that thing that can come out to be a challenge with all the billions that we've heard so far. I don't see that thing that will come out to be a challenge to solve this particular issue of insecurity. I don't see it. You know, this is one of the statements I heard and uh, I was surprised, so shocked. Because it, it is not supposed to be coming out from a country like Nigeria if the government is not involved in this. Remember, some times ago, there were certain arrests that were made in connection to that uh, um, issue of insecurity. And some top government officials were involved, were part of the people that were arrested. You know, they were part of the people that were arrested in connection to that uh, issue of insecurity. You know, that is to tell you that that particular thing is becoming more like a business in Nigeria. To tell you the direction that the country is going. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Let me say this. If that country is really too wide for one person, considering the way we think, the way we reason, the way we approach things, if that country is too wide for one person to handle, it is better we divide it or we go back to regional system of uh, government, regionalism. That will be the best option so that people can handle their people very, very well the way they want it. You know, that issue of insecurity will be, as in, it will not find a space. This man said a lot of things in this video, and I will just uh, want you to continue. Get uh, Watch the, the end of the video. You will hear a lot of things from him. One small killing, senseless killing of innocent people yesterday. Now we pray to Almighty Allah to guide us all right, in this two-day summit, to come up with proposals to not end insurgency because you cannot end insurgency everywhere, but to bring it to the minimum 
that people can go about their lives without lack or hindrance. Distinguished Excellencies, I will not forget to recognize the former president who came all the way from Daura for this program. That shows, our, that shows his commitment and concern too as a Northwesterner. And I think it's important for us to always pray for our leaders. Most people here and those listening, because I think this is televised, most people gathered are fairly very, very familiar with the causes as well as the consequences of the insecurity in this part of the country for the last one decade or so. Reports after reports, conferences after conferences, consultations after consultations, and of course recommendations after recommendations, still the problem persists. Why? It's time to ask the question, why are things still in the state they are today, despite the tons of money spent on a procuring equipment for the services and also for the well-being of the personnel, and also what the governors have been doing to bring to an end this insecurity. We need to ask this question for us to discuss and move and know how to move forward. But without given an answer to this question, we cannot go anywhere. We will come back to another conference again. We're still talking about the same issue, the same problem. I want to thank UNDP and other United Nations agencies and the German government for supporting this conference in this beautiful hall, very conducive to talk about issues of insecurity. But the real issues are talked outside the hall, where the people live, in the villages, in the towns, and in the markets, which I think we need to discuss here, so that the governors will have a way forward and what really we all must do together to bring these problems to a minimal level. I would like to thank you and even other agencies, but I want to say, no matter how much support you give us, if we are not ready and willing to end these, crime, these criminal activities, we can't succeed. We will be the ones to work for this and end these problems if we so desire. Nobody will come from somewhere to work for us. Nobody will come from the moon to solve these problems. We must solve our problems. So I'm very much pleased with this uh, inaugural meeting of the Northwest Governors Forum to once more talk about. We have had a series of conferences in the last 10, 12 years on these issues. And the last one we had in 2022 was the most instructive, was the, I think, the best way forward. But unfortunately, we could not implement anything as elections 2023 came on. Now, a year after the elections, we have this program, we have this uh, program today in Kamina to discuss about what we need to do. I think it's important for us to tell ourselves the home truth because we must tell ourselves the home truth. What we must do to challenge these bandits, because we all know the consequences of this banditry and insurgency on the moral and on our lives. Because it will take decades to get out of it, if at all we get out of it. Because we all know the consequences and we know the problems. I would like to come back home as we discuss, because this is an open forum, there are so many things you cannot say. Because you are on TV, you are on live TV, and you are, you are also uh, in, the, on the, in the internet. So maybe when we come down in close the, uh, session, we discuss some of these issues. Because the last conference, as I have said, had former ministers of defense, had former service chiefs, and they brought one very good way forward, which we met with the Northern Governors Forum. And in fact, let me just say, we have met with the Northern Governors Forum nothing less than five to six times on some of these issues. Now, this new set of governors, I believe, will be the change we need to uh, utilize on for us to reach out to everybody and have, a, have this uh, successful outcome of whatever we decide to do. So we would we'll like to assure you, on behalf of, Northern, of the Northern traditional leaders, which I happen to be the chairman, on behalf of all traditional leaders in the country, we are always ready because we know the problem of the people 
uh, on our shoulders and people come to us and we are always ready to work with the government or the, with the governments at all levels to move our, our states, our country forward. Be rest assured, we are willing, but our presence here alone shows that yes, we are here and we are always willing once we are called upon or when we now call upon you, the governors, because we know your ideas are always open to us. We have never stopped seeing us whenever we have issues to discuss with you. We will continue to work with you. We must continue to work with you because we know that's the only way forward to save our region, to save our country from the numerous problems that we've been facing. I have a short distance. I will find a way of getting it across to the organizers of this program. Maybe when we come to some close, at the closing session, we can discuss some of these issues as we listen to other comments from people so that we now move our region, the biggest region, the most populated region, the region where all the votes count to make somebody a president. So we know what Northwest is and we know what Northwest is not. We know we are humble people. We know we, are, we reach out to everybody. We know we fear God Almighty. And God in his infinite mercy will bring to an end all the spiritual challenges facing us, in particular in this region and in the country. I'd like to thank the VP for taking time despite the loss to be here. That shows his commitment for him to just come here and be with us, also to pray for you. And we assure you, you are part and parcel of us. We wish you all the very best. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless all our leaders. May he give them the strength to move our country forward. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.